The bigger they are, the harder the fall. You've probably heard this saying before, but it rings doubly true for the original GTX Titan. And we're gonna find out why by the end of today's video. Back in 2013, Nvidia launched their Titan lineup of graphics cards, with the first one being essentially a beefed up GTX 760 with double the VRAM and around double the price as well, but it did net you quite a bit more performance over that graphics card. But the Titan was aimed at professionals and enthusiasts. It wasn't really a consumer card, as that was reflected in the price. Anyways, this is the graphics card which we use to test out the Q6600, which you can watch in a video up there or there after this one. Anyways, I wanted to see how it gets on when you pair it with a modern processor. And to find out, we've tested it at 1080p with a Ryzen 5 7600 in our testing PC. The specs of which can be found in the description below with our Amazon affiliate links. If you buy anything through these, I do get a small kickback and it really does help out the channel. As for the Titan, we've left it at its stock out of the box settings and the latest Kepler driver, which is 475.14, if I remember correctly. It'll be down there anyways. With that being said, let's see how this gets on. Let's start off the benchmarks with Fortnite and as always, the performance API is just super clutch for these older GPUs. 389 FPS on average with a 1% low of 252 in the Fortnite OG mode. Yeah, I think we will take that on a graphics card from 2013. Not bad performance at all. Pretty good Titan, not, not bad. We need to put our happiness on the back burner for a bit because Cyberpunk 2077 on the low preset with high textures is uh, not a particularly brilliant performer. 35 FPS on average with 28 for the 1% low is meaning we're getting around a Xbox One level of gaming experience here. It, it's not great. Yes, the high textures do make the game look quite a bit better, but that 35 FPS is not really that good. And Cyberpunk, it's not a great performer on anything below Turing, I'd like to say. So that's something you've got to keep in mind. We're back on the up now with Counter-Strike 2. Admittedly, this is a CPU demanding game, but then again, the GTX Titan was still putting in some pretty decent performance. Just over 200 FPS on average with a 1% low of 126. Yeah, I think I could competitively game on this setup. It's really not that bad. Yes, the 7600 is definitely pulling its weight here, but it wouldn't be doing that if the Titan was up to the job either. So pretty good GTX Titan, not bad. Minecraft's a game that I like to test on these older graphics cards, especially with the Sodium mod. This is basically just free performance for Minecraft. Every Java edition should install this mod because the Titan can get just under 800 FPS with 390 for the 1% low on a 16 chunk rendered distance with the fancy graphics enabled. Yes, Minecraft looks good with this and you can see quite far and I don't think you'd be having any problems with a GTX Titan in Minecraft. Red Dead Redemption 2 set to the first balance setting is, uh, it's, it's not great on the GTX Titan, I'm not going to lie to you. 24 FPS on average, nice Hollywood production right there with 21 for the 1% low is uh, pretty bad. I know this game is basically a movie, but you don't need a movie frame rate while playing it and I just don't recommend the Titan for this. Yes, you could probably lower the settings and keep the textures on ultra but I'm not sure how much more frames you'd be able to get going this way. So I don't really recommend a Titan for Red Dead 2. And we also got a driver warning while opening it as well. So yeah, that's gotta be known. But hey, things are looking up in Rainbow Six Siege on the low preset with 140 FPS on average and a pretty solid 1% low too. Yes, I'd consider this to be a competitive level experience, Ideally, you want a bit more than 140 FPS if you really want the best out of your sort of your PC in an esports scenario. But to be honest, given the age of this graphics card and the scenario, I think the Titan's doing a pretty good job here, and you can't really ask that much more from it. Unlike Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar's Cash Cow GTA 5 gets on pretty well on the high preset with 2 times MSAA. 73 FPS with a 1% low of 59 frames is much better than what we were getting on the Q6600 and there weren't any weird rendering problems like we saw with that processor. It's nothing but a smooth and a high quality gaming experience here. So if you wanted to play on some 5M servers or just GTA 5 in general, the GTX Titan paired with a relatively competent eight threaded cpu at least will do pretty well so it's titan in name 
not Titan in performance, I'll say that for free. Yes, this graphics card in anything considered remotely modern is not going to be performing that well if it even starts it. If we look at Cyberpunk 2077 here, we were locked to the low settings and the only saving grace being the six gigabytes of VRAM, which allowed us to use the high textures. But you are expecting around Xbox 360 levels of performance in this game with around like sort of like 30 FPS. So yeah, it's not the greatest experience in the world, but it is native 1080p and you have got high quality textures. So it's not that big of a downside, but then again, it's it's not tight in performance, let's be honest. And then when we go over to Red Dead Redemption as well, performance here was not great. It was like a Hollywood standard 24 frames per second on the balance preset, on the first balance one on the slider. But I admit, we could always lower the settings here and then just keep the textures on ultra and we'd still get a pretty decent looking game. But it just goes to show that this Titan isn't really a titan performer anymore and if you wanted to play anything released after sort of 2021 you're not going to be having any luck on this graphics card because kepler gpus haven't received any game ready drivers for the past four years and it doesn't even support directx 11.1 out of feature level let alone 12.0 or 12.1 out of feature level either so yeah your options are kind of limited for modern games on this gpu but there are some games that the Titan does play quite well, like Minecraft with the Sodium mod. Here you're getting an absolute metric ton of performance. I know the 7600 is carrying a bit, but this is what the GPU can do. And what it can do in Minecraft with a 16 chunk render distance with the fancy graphics is pretty impressive. But the Sodium mod is definitely a must for Minecraft Java Edition players. And then when we look into some competitive titles like Rainbow Six Siege and Counter-Strike 2, yeah, the Titan's giving out a very competitive frame rate here, especially in Counter-Strike, albeit both these titles are a bit more CPU demanding than on the GPU. But at least we know what the Titan can do when it's not being held back by any sort of processor. However, this is all well and good, but I still don't recommend the GTX Titan in 2025. And that's purely down to, obviously, its Kepler architecture, which is very old and did not age very well and it's pricing this goes for around like 70 to 80 pounds on the used market mainly because of what's engraved on the heatsink here gtx titan so i just don't recommend it purely because you can get a much better deal with different graphics cards if we look at something like the gtx 1660 this has the same amount of vram more performance it's a lot more efficient as well and it's still supported with game ready drivers for the same price as well so that's what i'd definitely recommend there if you wanted to spend a bit more and get an RTX badge, you could always go with the RTX 2060 or 2060 Super. The latter has more VRAM, a ton more performance, but both of them also have DLSS. So if you needed to get some virtually free performance, you could always enable that, which is not an option on the GTX Titan or even FSR for that matter. There's absolutely no upscaling technologies available on this graphics card but in the case of the rtx 2060 super this graphics card can play virtually any game on the market right now even indiana jones which has got a hard ray tracing requirement yes it's almost double the price of the gtx titan but i believe it's worth it as you're getting more than double the graphics card in my opinion but if you wanted a modern alternative to the 2060 super you can check out this graphics card in this video up here with that being said I'll catch you in the next one.